Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. I'm Hank Green, welcome to Crash Course. Meet some of the best educational video creators in the world. Millions of fans and billions of views because of their ability to make videos that work. What is it these YouTubers do to make their educational content work so well? How can their methods be applied to the world of corporate training? And does it all boil down to something simple even a student assistant can do? A big corporation actually asked me to figure this out and present my conclusions at a workshop at their headquarters tomorrow. So we better get started. They told me it can't be about specific software, fancy cameras or professional editors. It has to be about the very fundamentals of what makes a video work. They sent me a few examples of their first videos and asked me to make these look better. And while there is room for improvement on the visual side, that's actually not where I'd begin. Because if you go straight to scene design, you skip the most important part of video. It is not easy to write a video script. The main reason is that we're not used to write in spoken language. When the top creators deliver their video scripts to the camera, you can't even hear it scripted. Maybe someday we'll all live in a world where we all have these wearable computers on our faces all the time. They have abandoned the written and embraced the spoken writing style. One of my heroes when it comes to writing style is Y Combinator founder, Paul Graham. His blog has already reached canonical status and one of my favorite posts is called Write Like You Talk. He says, if you simply manage to write in spoken language, you'll be ahead of 95% of writers. And it's so easy to do. Just don't let a sentence through unless it's the way you'd say it to a friend. As true as this is, it's actually not easy to write like you talk. But there are ways to convert your writings into something that sounds more conversational and is easier to digest for a video viewer. What I noticed about the scripts that my client sent me to prepare for the workshop is that they use passive voice a lot. That's when you let stuff happen to the subject of the sentence instead of the subject performing the action. The man is bitten by the dog versus the dog bites the man. Is it to sound more clever? Paul Graham says, You don't need complex sentences to express complex ideas. It is professional to use the shorter, active version of every sentence. Another problem with written language is that it's full of ing words. So by adopting this method, we are ensuring we're playing on the same field as our competitors. So I hit Command F to find them all, and then I simply flip these to the active casual version. So we adopt this method to make sure we play on the same field as our competitors. I'm sure Paul Graham wouldn't be a huge fan of spoken headers either. Headers are used a lot in writing, but they sound super weird in a voiceover. Imagine this, you tap your colleague on the shoulder and say, Sustainability Strategy 2030. You probably would have gotten a better response if you used a complete sentence like, Let's talk about our sustainability strategy for 2030. This also applies to bullet lists. Bullets kill people especially when they're not converted into real sentences. What also occurs to me when I read Paul Graham's blog is that he uses a lot of short sentences, lots of full stops. This works great in video scripts because one sentence can then become one scene. So write like your talk is going to be one of the key points at tomorrow's workshop, but that's really only going to help them with the script and the voiceover. They also need to visualize what's said, but the thing is, what they show is only half the battle. How do you connect what's said to what's shown in a way that becomes crystal clear to the viewer? About a decade ago, whiteboard animation really caught on. You know it when you see it, this captivating format where you watch a hand draw what the voiceover says. This is pleasant to watch because there's a clear connection between what's said and what's shown. From the book Uncommon Sense Teaching, I learned that we have an auditory and a visual channel in our brains that we can use to take in information, but this is a double-edged sword. The authors described how powerful it is when what you hear and see is aligned. One plus one becomes three. But if these two channels are misaligned, it becomes close to impossible to understand when you hear one thing and are shown another. Whiteboard animation is a perfect example of this. A voiceover covers the script while a hand draws everything that's said. Video is a powerful uh, means of communication. It's the language of young people. Now, you don't have to learn to draw or use a whiteboard animation tool. You actually don't need any skills to utilize this very simple hack. What I think my client will appreciate is the fundamental principle of show it when it's said. A practical way to show stuff when it's said is to start with a blank scene. When the voiceover says, in this video, we'll learn this one thing and this other thing and how they are connected. That's what we show. You simply add enter effects to everything instead of showing everything at once. At the workshop, I'm probably also going to stress that 
The voiceover is master and the visuals are servants. Voiceover leads the way, the visuals follow. If it's not in the voiceover, it's not in the video. The best creators always keep their visuals moving, always something to look at. A face, a graphic, a text that connects to what they say. But what these creators also know is that the individual scene doesn't matter if the overall video isn't paced right. What's the simplest way to make the overall viewing experience an engaging one? Now, I know this field of corporate training fairly well, and I know that a lot of what the employees watch is mandatory. So they push back when I ask them to adopt a few YouTuber traits because our people have to watch this. No need to make it TikTok crazy. Well, maybe not TikTok levels in terms of scene duration and editing style, but how about a little bit of YouTube flavor on top of those dry mandatory videos? I am both a creator and a consumer on YouTube. When I consume my daily dose of YouTube videos, I sometimes turn off the sound so I can truly appreciate the editing. One day I fell into the BBC rabbit hole and what I noticed was a relatively high pace in their editing. You'd think that animal documentaries with their beautiful shots and their slow progressing stories would leave plenty of time to enjoy every detail. But no, BBC understands pacing and most of their shots are only a few seconds long. My client had 20 second scenes where almost nothing happens on the visual side. And this is not to say that you need BBC level footage or professional editors to help you out. All you need to take from this example is to strive for shorter scenes. A simple benchmark to follow is five second scenes, meaning flip the page every five seconds. If they manage to write like you talk with lots of shorter sentences, it's all gonna fit when one sentence gets one scene. And if they show it when it's said, the voiceover has probably moved on to something new after five seconds anyways. That is what I'm gonna teach them tomorrow. <sighs> Just came back from the workshop and it went really well. They love the three hacks, but on my way home, I thought to myself that this would only get them 80% of the way. They could actually forget everything I've said and still win with video if they just do this one thing that I talk about in this next video.